What up boys and welcome back to yet another video. So in today's video I want to talk a little bit about how I decide my farms like which farms I'm gonna do because I get a lot of questions about that. How could I possibly with like 3000 different auctions know what to farm when like when to restock a certain items because it's going to be a lot of work having to maintain and keep note of all of the sales that you do and specifically go out and restock those and that's not really how it happens at all so that's what i wanted to talk about in today's video and hopefully that's going to answer a lot of questions before we do so though big thank you to everyone that has picked up the zero to 10 million gold guide the support has been massive i'm so glad that you guys are liking the book and if you guys have no clue what the book is it's basically uh, a step-by-step -step guide on how you can go from zero gold and all the way up to 10 million gold and the best feature about it is the fact that you get every single update that i do to the book completely for free so whenever there's a new patch or even a new expansion i update the gold guide and i send that updated version automatically directly to your email so if you're interested in it make sure you use the discount code the dragonflight for 50 percent off and if you already have the gold guide and you enjoy it, you're definitely going to enjoy the VIP Discord too. It's so cool to see that so many people have joined in. It's pretty much like a Patreon, but everyone, like everything happens on the Discord. And when you're a member of that Discord, you get a bunch of exclusive uh, stuff that you will only get on this Discord. For instance, all of my YouTube videos will be updated um, to the Discord before they go live on YouTube. There's also a different rooms with uh, exclusive spreadsheets to help you guys make gold and a bunch of more stuff. But you can read more about both of those things with the link down below in the description. So the questions that I'm getting is basically, student, how do you know what to restock, what to farm? Do you have a schedule? Do you have a plan? Do you keep track of your sales? And so on. And it's easy with crafted transmog because you can literally just click... Um, restock groups right and the add-on they're gonna know what you have on the auction house and what you've sold and it does all the work for you like it will put every single item that you don't currently have on the auction house up on a list and you can just craft everything that you uh that, that you're missing at the moment but that's not the case with farm the transmog and items in general so it's going to be a lot of work just looking through your sales and keep in mind this is when you have like 2000 plus transmog right it's <coughs> a lot of work to just go through the mailbox uh, and like writing down what you've sold and then go out and restock it so um my tactic is uh is different and we're going to talk a bit about that but it's very important to note that this is not for those people starting out to gold farm like if you guys start out to gold farm you got to do everything to get like every single item due to all of the popular farms they're popular for a reason to fill up your auction house but once you've done that how do you keep up right that's what this video is all about so what i do is i'm gonna show this display this by using the infographic uh by sustainer um that you guys can see uh, right here it's basically just loot table from uh like vanilla all of the different dungeons what they can drop what's specific to those dungeons really cool stuff um and this one right here basically what i do is so everyone should farm a lot of these loot tables like these loot pool a b and c and d and so on uh and this one displays it really well because you want to get um, you want to get those unique items from specific dungeons, like from RFD, for instance, uh, Dire Mole, RFK. But you also want to get all the uh, the other items that's inside the loot table. So uh, for SM, right, like this, a couple of uh, unique items for SM. But then there's also going to be a list of items uh, that can drop from um, like SM and Gnome or like just so-called world drop items that's within the level range of that dungeon but basically how i work when i restock uh, and it, it probably shows in my youtube videos due to the loot from 100 runs is that i only pay attention to the really rare and big sales those matter to me uh, so for instance in um in rfd right I know that in RFD, one of the uh, most expensive items from RFD is the Bone Slasher, right? 
So I don't really keep notes of selling anything else from RFD or from that loot table. But once I sell my Bone Slasher, I have one objective and that is to get another Bone Slasher. So what I do is I do RFD up to 100 times, hence my loot from 100 runs YouTube videos. And while you're trying to get this Bone Slasher, which is a really expensive and rare drop, you will get everything else from that loot table as well. So you're just naturally going to fill up the auction house with all of those items that you're not really tracking, right? And once I get my Bone Slasher, I also have that big ticket item up on the auction house. And then I maybe I've sold something like uh, a Skull Flame Shield, right? Another very expensive item. So I do my absolute best to get a Skull Flame, which can be acquired by doing a lot of different farms in that case. Like, so I can do Selitus if I want to farm with people. I can do SM or LBRS or BRD if I uh, want to do solo farms in order to get the Skull Flame Shield. And that's how I work with all of my items. Same thing with the Shadowfang Keep. Like, I would do Shadowfang Keep, and I wouldn't try to get the, the Gloom Shroud and the Necrology Robe and those so-called super items, but I would try to get myself a, a Shadowfang, right? And while trying to get that Shadowfang, uh, I'm also going to get a bunch of uh, these other items from the dungeon, like the Buccaneers and the Silver Tread, in hopes of getting a Shadowfang. And it's the same thing that's very important with the super items. Like, obviously, everyone is aware of the old demand super items, but my main objective is never to get a super uh, drop item like the Jackhammer or the Digmaster. That's just gravy on the top, right? Uh, instead, I would try to get a Jinsu. If I sell a Jinsu, I'm going to try again to get another one. So we'll do 100 runs of old demand. Even if I get the Jinsu after 20 runs, I'm still going to finish the 100 runs because... Well, I want to make the a video for the YouTube series loot from 100 runs. But while I try to get the Jinsu, I'll get all of these green items. I'll get a bunch of these blue items as well, like most times before I get the Jinsu. But it, it might be easy for me because I know all of these items uh, like by, by name. Like I know exactly what, what items uh, we're talking about, where to get them, how much they're valued at. For you guys to look at this list, you have no clue if your main objective should be to obtain the Vibroblade or obtain the uh, the Mech Builder's overalls, right? But you're just starting out, so you're supposed to do all of this anyways. And then if you notice in your mailbox on your auction house that you're getting a high value sale, just go on Wowhead, search up the item, where did it drop? Try to get another one and you're naturally going to fill up the auction house with a bunch of other items from that uh, loot table as well. And that's pretty much what I do. Like from uh, from Nomer, there's a couple of items that I would want. I would want the Mech Builders overall. I would want the Vibro Blade as well and the Mega Chopper. Um, and if I were to do like Sunken Temple, uh, I really would like the Stealth Blade. So I do it mainly for the Stealth Blade, but I know that I'm going to get a bunch of other items too. And that is how I'm restocking the auction house at any given time. I only go for the big value items and everything else, you're bound to get it, right? And it's just, it has worked out so far very well for me by doing that. Uh, and it's the same thing for a lot of uh, other items as well. Like, let's say that you want to get yourself uh, a BFA mount. BFA mounts, very, very valuable. While you do the farm for BFA mounts, you might get yourself the shards for the mount that sell. There's a lot of gray items that sells well from BFA. And now that you can transmog those, you have epic uh, world drops such as Tibu that do well. Uh, so you're bound to get a couple of those while going for the, uh, the big item. And also, by focusing on these big items only, the gold per hour, once you get them, is going to be good. Because even if you have to spend 10 hours, right, trying to get your Skull Flame Shield from a bunch of various farms... Once you get that Skull Flame Shield, you might sell it for half a million gold. So that Skull Flame Shield alone is going to bring you in a, an average gold per hour of 50,000 gold. And everything else is just a bonus. It's the same thing with uh, something like the Black Rock Bulwark, right? The Black Rock Bulwark, I've, uh, I've, I've sold a lot of these bad boys. A lot of them. Uh, however... I made more gold selling the, the other stuff that has dropped in my hunt for a Black Rock Bulwark. So last time I received one, I sold it for, what was it, 475, 474. 
and that was after a 10-hour uh, session for a video so that shield alone gave me 47,000 gold an hour but I made more than that with the other stuff that I farmed but the main objective was to get the Black Rock Bulwark and uh, you just happen to get a bunch of other cool shit as well so hopefully that answered uh, some of the questions that you guys have on how I uh, restock my auction house but as I said, this is not, if you're just starting out, you should do everything, right? You have a bunch of stuff to do. Basically, every new farm that you do is going to bring you a shit ton of items that you don't already have on the auction house. While me, I'm just going there to scavenge through those few big items that I've sold. And most of the items that I'm getting, uh, like, besides from the big drops, it's just going to be more duplicates, right? Like, I'm, most likely I already have, this, like, most of those minor items, but I might have sold a couple of them. So I only have, like, one of them left, where my max cap for posting is set to three items of the same item. Uh, with that being said, though, that was pretty much it for this, uh, this video. So hopefully you guys liked the video. If you did, make sure to press that thumbs up. It really helps out me and my channel. And I will see all of you guys back in at the next video. But until then, bye-bye.